Time's up. Let's do this. Hammer Storm. Alright, welcome back ladies and gentlemen, Babel here bringing you a game between Evil Genius Gaming and Seafood Gaming into the 5th week of the MSHL Season 1. As you can see here, the game now has just effectively remade itself and we are now looking at both teams going quickly in the game here because they know that time is running pretty short. And yeah, so this is a remake and effectively there's nothing real happening in the first game so no worries about that whatsoever, you've not missed any action. I'm gonna have to do the introduction again, so on Team Legion side is Seafood Gaming and Washer and Tao playing as the Swiftblade, we've got Desios onto the Aluna as well as Nyong 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 onto the um, Pharaoh, we also got Link here onto the Bubbles, last but not least TSK going to play as the Magmas and on Hellbound team it is gonna be Evil Genius Gaming, this is the one from Malaysia, it's not from United States so don't worry about that, Gmo here onto the Jerziah, Vivian loves me uh, direct translation, Vivian Iwall is going to be playing as Richard Hack. We have Iroy onto the Engineer as well as Han Ga-in onto the um, Hammerstorm. Last but not least, Hiroki onto the Solstice. So earlier before the game was remade, there was pretty good action happening from both sides and we're looking at also pretty farmed up Hammerstorm at the mid lane here. And now back to the fact that uh, the game is completely remade, I think the lane's going to change a little bit and that's just the extra advantage the Legion's going to have here. And this is not what I like about it. This shouldn't be the case, but unfortunately they will still have this advantage because they will now lane, try lane, bottom lane in an effort to protect Swift Blade's farm. And that means that Jerzy is not going to win his lane. However, top lane bubbles up against Wretched Hack should be a pretty even fight. And Pharaoh at a mid lane effectively is going to lose this lane against that of Hammer Storm as well as Engineer. So while you win some, effectively you also lose some. And that's the sad news here. Well, we'll see how this is actually going to happen for both sides. Bottom lane, Jerzy effectively is going to go down. I don't see how he can put up uh, a good fight. But well, we'll see. So Aluna here, effectively going to just um, say hi to Jerzy. And Magma is going to be in the background here. A little bit of a close proximity b between the Magmas as well as Jerzy, but we'll see how far that can go. And meanwhile, back to the middle lane here, Engineer is going to be here with the Hammer Storm. And Pharaoh is just effectively going to be able to pop up to Manage Soul as a form of harassment. That's about it. Meanwhile, Magmas down south just decided to land a stun. Good stun. The gang is going to happen. The gang is real. And Aluna going to go in with a little bit of a good electric stun from the Emerald Lightning here. Magmas. Uh, actually, Jerzy is just taunting them a little bit with the um, positioned hole. Pretty good stuff there. He's actually going to pop the health potion nonetheless, so there's not much of a good difference there for help on team. And back to the top lane here, we're going to see Wretch Attack and a pretty good standard position against that of Bubbles. So Solstice is going to be farming the NC, and we're going to see, um, surprisingly, help on team is not going to win all three lanes. Uh, they are going to win the mid lane, and that's about it. The bottom lane, unfortunately. So Swiftblade is going to have to farm here, and effectively, that's going to be two support. I actually kind of like the fact that support needs good level, and I don't see how um, Luna or Magmas is going to get good level if this is going to happen. So that is unfortunately going to be the set case here for them. And we'll see. But there we go, so Keg is going to connect here. Pharaoh in a little bit of a dip trouble here. Unfortunately, no much, not much of a good follow up. Wall of Mummy, not the wisest choice. Effectively, he's going to fit off the Bloodluster. You gotta be kidding me. That is, it would have been a lot better if he just ran away into the tree stair with the wall of mummy. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to make it or he thought he wasn't able to make it and popping the wall of mummy is going to give up the first kill. And the blood loss is going to help on team. So that essentially provides them with a 700 goal lead and the Luna is just so irritating. Jerzy say enough is enough, he's going to pop a little bit extra damage on the Luna. We're going to the trees here where he tries to pull off a little bit of reverse juke action. Meanwhile, Swiftblade is going to get most of the farm here. So, Jerzy getting boxed out terribly. Meanwhile, back to the melee now. And oh my god, Pharaoh doesn't want to be in his spot. They are effectively going to go down again. So, Pharaoh goes down for a second time and Hellbound team picks up a 1k goal lead. Magmas comes in here, strolling a little too late. There's nothing he could have done in that situation there. So, two minutes up already and Hellbound team right now very different from the first game before the remake. We're looking at Hellbound team with an absolute lead so far in this game and that is pretty disgusting. It is a 1k goal lead for them and they are looking pretty pretty heavy themselves. Alright, so meanwhile we have 
in a mid lane here. Not much of an action. Oh, bottom lane, a little bit of extra action happening. Power throw is going to land on a Jerzai. Jerzai is going to take a bit of a damage, but Gmo there effectively is just going to play it safe. And he is slowly trying to absorb as much level as possible. Simply is going to over level him without much of a doubt here. And this is why the remake is absolutely unfair for Evil Genius Gaming because now they have extra um, space here for Seafood Gaming. To try and put forth a good defense at bottom lane. So that is the unfortunate thing here going forward. And alright, so mid lane here we're now looking at Magmus and Pharaoh. Both of them, one at level 3, they're one at level 2. And effectively Hammerstorm's just having most of this farm. Well, at least the GPN chart looks somewhat similar to before remake, the prior remake. And we're looking at Hammerstorm with 350 GPM. Uh, and Surplate unfortunately is the only difference here. Surplate is at 300 GPM. And he's getting a lot more farm as compared to the first laning option there by Seafood Gaming. So that is the main difference between pre-remake and pro-remake. And oh, there we go. Kek again can connect. Farrow now going to pop the wall of mummy. But that's not really going to be effective here. And Magmus is not even going to land a stun. So that is Nyok's third death. And so far, all three deaths on Team Legion side is um, because Nyok, you know, just died there. And effectively, this also means that Halbon Team gets a little bit extra farm and goal on the Engineer. So... Essentially, the main difference here between the, the pre-remake and post-remake is that Super Blade gets good fun, but he is still going to get stopped somewhat by Jerzai because Jerzai still managed to get level 4. And Jerzai now is going to try and met up against the Super Blade, but oh, here comes the power throw. He's so close. He's going to pop in the light and might just fall here. Going to try and run away. One last hit from the Super Blade with the marchers on. Good juke there by Jerzai. Jerzai might just eat through the trees here for a little bit extra. Extend the runaway. Power throw, unfortunately, not going to connect and also going to pop the protective charm. So Jerzai will stay alive here and back to the mid lane. It seems like they are trying to put off a gang from Hellbound team onto the top lane here, but Hammerstorm is not able to put a kill coming out onto the bubbles. Bubbles will still be alive. So that say, we're now looking at a 5 minutes game, 0 and 3, so close for Legion's first death. I thought it could celebrate a very good early birthday, but unfortunately they're not able to do that, and we'll have to take the fall. So that's it, 5 minutes up, 0 oh and 3, Bubbles effectively gonna get a little bit extra challenge coming from Ratchet Attack, Ratchet is still gonna put forth a little bit extra harassment on this Bubbles, Bubbles gonna put forth a little bit of a back here, pretty good stuff there, Imp is gonna take a little bit extra damage, might just take the fall, minimum back to the mid lane, Magmus is gonna be laning here by himself. Pharaoh is going to go into the jungle because he's not able to lane here by himself. And that's it, top lane, there goes the Solstice, good gank, going to happen here, but no kill on the bubble because Bubble is able to run away very quickly with a good action there. So here comes the Keg and the turret. Unfortunately, Magmus does have a little bit extra ice game mechanism, but Jerzai is going to come in from behind. Hell Potion is going to get popped there on the Pharaoh. Jerzai will miss the Magmus train, but will now spot out the Pharaoh. And there goes the hammer throw. Jerzai in the light is going to heal up, and the Wall of Mummy completely ridiculously useless. Your Kek is not going to connect, and the Hellfire is going to be used here as well. Jerzai is going to try and go in with the Righteous R to try and slow down the Pharaoh. Pharaoh is going to try and run away, but is there any backup? That's the question. Backup is going to come here, and Bubbles might just pop the Shell Surf. Shell Surf goes down. Bubbles catches up with Jerzai. Jerzai might just pick up the skill, in the light's gonna save Jerzai, Gmo gonna try and pull back, Hammerstorm effectively not gonna do much of anything here, he doesn't have the mana for anything at all, will also pull back, so that's a fail kill on both counts, effectively the Pharaoh didn't die fourth time, and that's the main difference. So with that said, uh, Legion team now effectively is not in a good spot, Hellbound team will have a goal lead but they they need to make sure that hack gets good farm and hack by the definition of good farm i'm expecting hack to get something like a light brand or you know something that could effectively uh, a dawnbringer could effectively go and provide substantial good extra burst for team help on he might also want to go for grimo power depending on the situation so far and back to Suplay. Suplay now is also just level 6 nicely with um, Ghost Marchers up as well as a Life Tube. He doesn't have sufficient damage uh, to pick up any of this minions just yet, but we are looking at him um, putting forth good roams real soon. And we'll see what kind of a position he's going to provide for help on team, or rather Legion team here. And level 5, Pharaoh, a little bit too punished for his uh, mistakes in the early game. But now back to the top lane, Bubble's gonna be here by himself, level 6 as well, level 7, Wretched Hack. Wretched Hack's not able to do much of anything by himself. And it's 7 minutes 30 seconds into this game here. 2.8k goal late for Evil Genius Gaming, they're looking pretty good themselves. Jerzaya now gonna try and destroy the bottom lane um, creeps here by himself. There is not much of a contest coming from Team Legion. Swift Blade by himself is at level 7. 
and effectively suplex. There's nothing could probably do here against Jared Zaya. So back to the mid lane. There goes the hammer throw, and this is the cag that's gonna connect. Unfortunately, much of a position change. Here comes Solstice, and there goes the wall of mummy. It's completely useless again. And as you can see, yeah, he should have popped the wall of mummy the moment he sees the um, hammer throw being used there by hammer storm. That would have been the right play. At least they'll make sure that you know hammer storm's not gonna be able to go in the cag. Even if, if even if it connects, there's not much of a burst damage coming out there as well. So that's the main difference there. So now, um, Sword Blade effectively was able to make sure Jerzy's health is very low. Will not be able to go in for the kill just yet, and it will pull back. Sword Blade is now at effectively 50% health and 40% mana. So we have Hammerstorm here just um, nicely in invisibility. And what of Rev by Desios is going to spot him out. So they know that there is an invisible Hammerstorm in this region. Therefore, mid lane's going to pull back a little bit. Meanwhile, back to checking in on the wretched egg. Actually, I am kind of impressed with the super blade. Super blade without any kill. Oh, there we go. The ultimate's gonna bump here, and Bubbles effectively might just die. Wow, big misplay by the wretched hag. Could have gotten the kill very easily. Would still like to commit to this one here. Might just flash off darkness in there, but unfortunately, the Bubbles there with good. Oh my god, Bad Blast sweeping the floor completely. Not able to get anything at all out of it at all. And Wretched Egg might just feed off the kill here. Legion T might just rejoice, but unfortunately, Wretched Egg, a clutch flash of darkness might just run away. Here comes the backup. Tormentor still not gonna connect. Magmus, greedy, wanting to pick up the kill here. We're just going. There goes the Lava Surge. Hellfire gonna get popped here by Fairby. He spots out. The Engineer will try and pull back. And Wretched Egg might just run away. Here goes the Hammer throw in again. Fairby might just get knocked in here. He gets locked in by his own wall of mummy. Able to run away. Last hit. Unfortunately, uphill miss is not gonna come into effect here. So Wretched Egg's gonna pick up the kill for Team Hellborn. And that's 5 0. Oh. Legion team so close to the first kill will not get it. Wow. Big misplays by the Wretched Hack. Could have gotten the kill if he didn't have stay there with the last click there. I wouldn't say it's really Bubbles' merit. It was like he was about to pop the Bad Blast but decided not to. Put on the whole position there. Wasn't able to pick up the kill. And now nearly losing his life there just to the combined efforts of Team um, Legion's mid lane there. It's good news at least that the Pharaoh was able to die. So Hell One Team could at least salvage one kill for one kill. But it would have been so much better if it was just Bubbles. Yeah, speaking about Bubbles, speaking of a lot of trouble by himself here at top lane. Sosa is still gonna try milking there. Slow is gonna be used already from the hack. And there goes the extra spot out here. Bubbles effectively still has got a shell surf mechanic up in just about three seconds. Gonna pop the Song of the Sea there. Unfortunately, take cover is not gonna be used and down he goes finally. And now back to the mid lane here. Three members from Team Legion gonna be at the mid lane. Luna also gonna join the fray here. And meanwhile, it doesn't like Hack's gonna get spotted out of here and the stun's gonna connect. Hack in a lot of trouble here. Hack doesn't have the Flesh of Darkness up for another seven seconds. Seven seconds is very long in a time like this. He is effectively going to die. I'm expecting power throw to be used, um, which would mean that it would be an easy kill on the Wretched Hack. Tormentor Soul also going to be able to burst a little bit extra damage onto this Wretched Hack here. So we'll see, we'll see how far he can go. And it would be a real challenge, you know, to see if Wretched Hack could run away safely. And on the flip side, Solstice is going to be here at the top, at the top lane by himself, level 9. Bottom lane, Jerzy, level 7. And level 8, Swift Blade here. Yeah, we'll see how far this place can go so far. 5k goal lead for Team Hellborn and 6k experience lead. This is just looking really, really bad for Team Legion. We, we talked a lot about... Um, the team fight mechanic in the early game. We talked up a lot about, you know, the fact that it could probably go in and pick off good stuns, good good team fights, good ganks and stuff like that. But unfortunately that wasn't the case so far. And Halbon team was able to somehow milk on the lane advantages that they had in the laning phase and effectively pull forward a little bit. And that's what we like here. It's uh it's really good for help on team. They played this game really well. I'm expecting them to win this game. Unfortunately Ratchet X is gonna die here. Um, and Hack is the ultimate carry, he's at level 8, Solstice is at level 9, but Solstice by himself, I'm not expecting him to have mu that much of an impact in this game. He needs to have items, and that's the trick here. So we are apparently waiting for Han Guy to reconnect, and that is the hammer storm at the mid lane. Effectively, they're discussing strategies already, they might want to try and make sure that they can save this hack, but it's, uh, it's quite a distance here to, to run and try and pick up the kill here on the Aluna. 
Hag definitely using the Sona Scream already. I don't know why he decides to flash with Darkness here. It's just too risky a maneuver to take and he just went with that anyway. Alright, so good stuff here. And we see the re uh, the game getting Let's resumed. Get it on! And will Hag die? That's the question. Here goes the power throw almost instantaneously. Hag still very low health. Might just die. There we go. Hellfire is going to pick up the kill. At least Desios will have that one there. And here comes Hammerstone. Rest of Hellbound team will be able to just charge in here, but will not pick up the kill. Jerzai down south very close to killing the Swiftblade. Swiftblade does have Ghost Marchers, so Jerzai needs to have at least similar boots to be able to slow him down. And that is the main difference between the movement speed of both heroes there. So yeah. So far everything looks pretty okay. In mid lane there is um, four heroes here. And oh, gonna have to be careful. Hammer throw is gonna be used and effectively keg as well, but here comes the bubble scout field. That might just change the game here. But look at that energy field, that's big. Hack comes in, but Hack doesn't have Babylon's There We go, Babylon's gonna be used as well. Pharaoh goes down, and now Bubbles is narrowly missing. Um, the bat blast, the hack was not better to pick up the kill there, and there goes the hammer throw, but nice take cover by Bubbles, Bubbles might just survive this one here, hack still wants the kill, last hit's gonna pick up the kill there, and the Luna, so close, but might just pop a power throw here, will not get it off because of the lack of mana, will now try and pull back, and it's a absolute disaster, two for one exchange, so close, so close for them, indeed. The had okay, top lane, Halbon destroys the tower there really nicely. And um, Retro Attack level 9, level 10, Solstice in the background just gonna pull back a little bit here. Pretty dangerous for Retro Attack to be roaming about without much of an item. He does have only the Ghost Munchers up, and I think it's in INT. No, okay, it's in Strength, that's good. And now back to the mid lane. Hammerstorm's gonna be here. Hammerstorm by far, I think, is still the highest GPM. Okay, no, it's um, Subplate. Subplate does have the Perseverance, or rather, uh, Sustainer up. Effectively might be looking for rune plate real soon. And that's gonna mean that he will be able to cleave in most of this damage that he deals. Jerziah down south level 8 by himself at about 195 GPM. There's the real scary thing about Hell One Team here is the fact that they've got three members above 300 GPM, and that's the Rich Attack, that's the Solstice, and the Hammer Storm. So all three of those heroes there are effectively going to be able to provide substantial steamroll damage against Team Legion, and Team Legion needs to be really careful if they want to, you know, at least provide substantial positioning here. So yeah, Hack's gonna try and provide some form of a gang at the top lane. Link here, Bubble's gonna try to run away, will be able to do so successfully. And Hack is just gonna go on with the farm. Hammerstone popping the ultimate here. And we'll see. So... Now we are now looking at, um, yeah, I was just telling the GM about the stream issues, so no worries about that. Hammerstorm taking a bit of a damage, mid lane, stun goes down, Bubbles comes in, there goes the Calfil, rough off the Pharaoh, and Magma's big eruption, Kang is gonna connect, and there we go, the Bat Blast gonna turn things around, good big Bat Blast coming in from the rush attack, that's also gonna deal some pleasure damage there, but Super Slashes gonna probably just make sure the error is gonna happen, nice hammer throw, that's sufficient, and also Solstice, big ultimate gonna get off here, and also at the same time, it seems like Super Blade effectively might just die, gonna have to be careful, Hammerstorm goes down to the tower, and now we're gonna be looking at extra ulti attack damage onto Solstice, and help on team is now going to try and nuke down the defense tower a little bit here. We'll see how far this is, good, how long this is going to take, but tier 1 is going to go down and Legion team effectively is in a really bad position. 11k goal lead for team Hellbond. Legion team, they have to find a way to come back into this game. They, they, they were trying the ganks there, but unfortunately there is the Ward of Sight here by Aeroid. It would substantially be able to spot a little bit of this area, which meant that they knew that they were coming. So yeah, I'm actually going to try here to see if I can fix the stream.
right, so here we go. The gang happening on Solstice. Solstice might just die, but power throw here. Effectively, was able to make sure he stays alive. In Sanitarius is the main reason why there was not much of a damage. But here comes Hammer, th uh, hammer throw from the Hammer Storm, and also the Wall of Mummy. Effectively, gonna be used here. But Pharaoh might just sacrifice himself. They are actually gonna go in here to kill the Pharaoh. Pharaoh now gonna try run away. The Elipid Archer Juke gonna happen, but the Sonar Scream from the Rush Attack is gonna pick up the kill pretty easily. There's no slow on the Magbus, and also Hammer Storm gonna land the Hammer Throw really nicely. The Luna, Luna now effectively just one last click damage away, but a. Uh, Sauna Scream again is going to pick up the kill and Hax is going to go in behind enemy lines going to try and pick up this Magma is Magma is going to try and run away Magma is here doesn't have Steam Buff Buff he's also going to take the fall so that's a hat trick for Vivian there Vivian is going to be able to farm up a lot faster right now he has got 900 gold in the bank 13k gold lead for Team Hellborn this is the redefinition of a steamroll and this is looking really scary so 13k goal lead for Team Halborn and Legion team, they have no way to climb back into this game. We'll see if they have a good solution, but so far I am keeping my fingers crossed. I don't really see a good way back. Swiftblade is at level 11, but he still doesn't even have his core items up. Meanwhile, Rush Attack is just very close to pick up his Grimoire power. He is at about 900 goal uh, in the bank here, so effectively he might be able to pick up his Blast up really quickly as well. So they are going to try and push the top lane. Once this top lane tower goes down and Wretch Attack, Bad Blast is online. Okay, Illuminate here is going to spot out most of this heroes here. And also, um, Bad Blast. Oh, here it comes Swift Blade, but it didn't go for the Swift Slashes. It's off cooldown and Eruption going to be used. The Keg is going to land here. Energy Field, Bad Blast going to be used. Feral, a lot of trouble. Sonic going to pick up a double tap here for the Ratchet Deck. Mino Swift Blade is going to go in with Swift Slashes that back of supply lines, but that's not going to deal anything at all. So is there with a clutch. Insanity Terrors was able to keep, make sure he was able to stay alive. Mio Deja Vu is not able to do much of anything. It's probably just a little bit of a rat race there. Legion Calls concede under 17 minutes and 30 seconds. It would just be a game here for Hellborn. Evil Genius Gaming proving that again they are the top team into cuck or rather they are the favorites going to this matchup here. So we have the game going in absolute favor for Team Hellborn. And Evil Genius Gaming, man. I never thought I'd see such a level of play coming up for them. And it seems like it's still pretty viable and we're just looking at clutch and sanitarious um, switches there by Hiroki. And Vivian, oh well, which is fantastic hat trick, fantastic double tap. He kind of redeemed himself with the miss bad blast, bad misplay there in a slight early game, but that's okay. So that's game one for Seafood Gaming and Evil Genius Gaming. We're gonna go into game two real soon, waiting for the game to be made here. And I'm gonna take a short break. This is Babel. Hope you guys enjoyed this cast. See you guys in a short while. And yeah. Well, in case you missed most of this action, it will be uploaded on EGTV's YouTube page, so you can still relieve the action there and then. That's it. See you guys in a short while. Babel signing off. See you guys.